Well, we had a subscriber to ask an, almost an unusual question, and that is, well, after watching Quick Tip 239, which is uh, about the prospect tool, how I explain uh, what it is and how to use it, this person says, but what is the difference between the prospect tool and the Fibonacci tool? I saw somewhere, it's also called the golden mean caliper. That's right, in some ways they are alike, in some ways they are different. And here are the two tools. Uh, this is the prospect tool. This is the Fibonacci tool. Fibonacci tool's got several names. As far as I know, the prospect tool is only called the prospect. But Fibonacci is also called a Fibonacci gauge. Fibonacci tool. It's called the Fibonacci caliper. Some people even call it the golden ratio tool or the golden ratio caliper. Uh, folks don't quite know what to call it yet. But you can see they look similar and they look different. Now, the similarity is that they're both tools for helping us gauge proportion. The difference is the kind of proportion we're gauging. Now, I explained to you that the prospect tool is about getting the proportions when you're either enlarging something or decreasing the size. In other words, if you have a small drawing, and you'd like to use that drawing, or you, you like the way the images are placed on that drawing, and you'd like to use that placement on your canvas, uh, you can simply gauge, uh, set the gauge here so that you pick up sizes of shapes, or pick up the, yeah, the size of the shape here, and then that same corresponding size will be here. So if you wanted a image, for example, to be three times or four times the size that you have it originally, you can adjust this tool to a point to enable you to do that. So that's prospect. And I explained that in the uh, in quick tip, what did I say, 239. But the, the Fibonacci tool is about proportion. And not just proportion, well that one's about proportion too, but this is about the golden ratio or the golden mean. And you probably know what that is. That's a, that's a proportion in nature that keeps being repeated in, in all forms of nature, all forms of growth. It's considered the ideal or perfect proportion. And this, this is called a Fibonacci tool because it's a tool that measures that proportion that we call the golden ratio. Uh, and it measures it so that we painters don't have to use mathematics. If we have a Fibonacci tool, we just let the tool help us through that. We don't have to use mathematics. Mathematically, the ratio is 1 to 6.8. And so uh, we know the golden rectangle to be 1 on the side and 1.618 1 on the long side, 1 on the short side, 1.6.8 on the long side. We don't need to remember all that as painters if we use a Fibonacci tool. So I want to give you, show you just, just guide you about using it. Now here it is, and you see this particular one will extend, say, this far. In other words, it will give us proportions that uh, where the maximum proportion is like this. These are available in larger sizes for if you're placing images or you're arranging a canvas. Uh, a larger canvas, and they're available in smaller sizes. They are also available. This is so, almost uh, this is a different shape. You'll find this shape, and there are also instructions online for making your own. Here's one I made out of cardboard, but it works the same way. So it's just a matter of getting the measurements correct for the parts. It's just four little parts there, but it's a matter of getting the uh, measurements correct, 
and getting the images, I mean the little um, doolallies that connect it uh, in the right place. So, but that's there for you. You wouldn't have to spend anything, go online and look for how to make a Fibonacci tool. And you can cut one out of cardboard or, or wood or, or whatever. And there's several shapes too. But anyway, this is one I particularly like. I found this one on Etsy. Now let me show you. This is really, really interesting. Industry uses that Fibonacci uh, tool or uses that golden ratio for a lot of things you're not even aware of. Even your credit card is the Fibonacci ratio. So let me show you. Now here's how it works. The long side, you see the tool. Just pull it right down here like this so that you can see point to point to corner on the long side. Now let me get that right. Okay, now you see the short side is there. So the proportion of this to this. And this proportion just happens to be 1, the proportion itself, to 0.618 there. And so we also find it in boxes, especially decorative boxes. It's just a very pleasant proportion. And we find in painting that it's a, a really soothing proportion and very balanced feeling proportion for placing shapes in a painting. But see, you, even this box, um, let me show you. Just put that down here so that you can see. Or there's the long side and you see the short side. It's the Fibonacci proportion or the golden ratio proportion. So it's interesting to kind of go around the house and find things that have been manufactured by the Fibonacci proportion. Cabinet makers use it an awful lot. Furniture makers use it. So it's, a, it's kind of a universal proportion. But we find it, as I said earlier, we find it in nature repeatedly. Now you see it right here. Uh, we, it's difficult to find or to be able to see the proportion in a photograph because unless the, unless the image is turned directly on or you're directly in a line with the image because, image because in photographs images will foreshorten and it appears that proportion to change. So we see the proportion in reality. So you can go out in nature with your Fibonacci gauge and you can measure this proportion. But I tried to find something where we got a head-on view and I found the seashell. So we see patterns in seashells, seed patterns in plants. We see growth patterns in plants. We see it all over nature, that same proportion. It's almost like it's a necessary proportion for, for um, growing or for things to be alive. And also it's been used throughout history. Uh, Fibonacci first discovered the actual ratio back in the 12th, 13th century. And then the Greeks were using it way back in the first and second and third, well, all the way up the fourth, especially the fourth and fifth century. Now the Parthenon's built on that proportion. Well, you can research it on, on the internet. It's, it's all there. But I want you to, I'm gonna point, show you here how nature does that. It's just, it's just, it's just incredible. So we always take the, uh, well, we can take either side, but we can go either way. So I'm just going to take the long side first. Now, if I take, uh, let's go, let's go, let's go, uh, let's get down here and go this way. So if I hold this here, can you see the proportion of the width of this to that is the golden ratio? Um, let's see. Sometimes we can get proportions. Let's see if we can get Let's see what we get here. There is a that is the long side, and we see you see in a where the round part of the shell ends. There, there it is on that side. So you can go throughout uh, throughout an image, a natural image, and you can find that proportion. Uh, one way that we can use it as artists, especially if we're doing flowers that we're looking head on at. Now the, the problem with using the proportion, the golden ratio, or the Fibonacci uh, gauge, the problem with using that in, in painting is that we don't always see things absolutely aligned or head on. We don't actually see, we don't re always see the patterns when we're looking at them. If something's turned away from us, we're going to see it more foreshortened. And so the Fibonacci tool is not going to help us there. 
but it does help us to study nature and it's just a fun thing to do, to work with. And I found this sunflower head on. I wanted to show you this. So if we adjust, now look at this. The inside of the sunflower, you see, is a ratio of the long side of the tool. And as we go around, you can see how the overall proportion of the petals of the flower are the ratio or within the ratio within the ratio of the shorter edge so that's that's something you can look for it's just fun to play with get one of those and, and play with you find yourself going out and measuring everything and it's also uh you can see a lot in the growth patterns of trees uh sometimes uh, well you can see it especially in a healthy tree the growth pattern of trees the spacing between the limbs often you'll find it now na if nature and if nature spaced everything according to golden proportion, it would be dull. So nature nature does have variations in proportion, but the major or uh, the major patterns will be pretty much along the Fibonacci. I mean the uh, the golden ratio proportion. But I, I just thought this is sort of interesting. If we take the width the width of the trunk of the tree here, and then we see as the trunk extends. Here you see we, we see this, and we also see a similar width as the uh, this this portion huge limb extends out here, and a lot of times you can find it within the spacing of limbs. It also is a wonderful way if you've got if you're painting a big tree or some sort of image that has lots of parts to it. If you space those according to the golden ratio or at least space the majority of them according to the golden ratio just it is just has a more pleasant appealing um, expression and people respond to that I don't know why they're responding to it but they do well, one other thing another uh, thing that I want to show you about the golden ratio you know we have this thing we do when we're placing our points of emphasis areas of emphasis in a painting uh, we've been taught that if we place those areas of interest in a painting in the, what we call the sweet spots, we've been taught that that's going to be one of, the most, one of the best and most pleasing places to put an area of emphasis. Well, I want to show you something here. And I want to do this sort of freehand for you. I'm going to take this away so that I'll have some more space. I want to do this sort of freehand because it works no matter what your shape of rectangle is so no no matter if you are uh if you have a canvas and you're placing images and you want your area of emphasis to emphasis to be in located in an area of the canvas where it's going to be more balanced and more appealing then here's here's how to find the sweet spots and then i'll show you how those sweet spots are actually a golden ratio so just sort of freewheeling it here okay okay just freewheeling it here uh so i'm just not even not even going to measure i'm just going to just place a rectangle and i'm going to shape it so i'm not trying to come up with a um, a golden ratio a golden rectangle or, or anything like that i'm just creating a, a rectangle and it's fun to do this on a large sheet of paper where uh where you make several propor different proportions of rectangles and it works the same way. So it's just one of those sort of miracles of nature that I'm about to show you here. Let's get this rectangle. Uh, it, they do, it does need to be relatively squared in order for this to work. Okay, sweet spots. We, a lot of people have different ways of showing sweet spots. Some people would divide the sections into three thirds this way and thirds that way. And then where the third lines intersect are the sweet spots. Uh, my favorite way, it's very similar, is to go from corner to corner like this. And you, could, you can imagine a line from corner to corner. I'll go ahead and I'll just kind of draw a broken line there. And then go from corner to corner here. Same thing. All right. The sweet spot are these little areas halfway between the center of the rectangle, your canvas, or your watercolor paper, or your pastel paper, whatever you're working on. 
uh, from the center to the corner, halfway between, that's what we call a sweet spot. And, uh, and it's a general area, so you see about right, halfway right in there, boom, boom, about halfway right in here and here. It's a general area, but it's a wonderful way to place your areas of emphasis. Now let me show you what's curious and acute about that, we might say. The distance between, you see how this works? The distance between these horizontally and each one of those in the edge is the golden ratio. Works the same way, of course, on this side too. There's your golden ratio. And you will find that in every, every proportion of rectangle. You even find it in the square. So there's something magical and almost, almost spiritual about the geometry, the proportions in geometry. And I think that's one reason why the golden ratio works. We can't really explain it. Mathematicians have been trying to explain it for years, centuries, but you can't really explain it. You just have to experience it. And you know that when you're using it in your paintings, whether it's to uh, place your center of emphasis or whether it's just the way you're spacing images between one another, you'll know that your painting is going to be more appealing and more expressive. So I think it might not be a bad idea if you just explore the idea of how the golden ratio works. So as I said before, uh, if you Google the Fibonacci gauge or golden ratio tool, start out with Fibonacci gauge, you're going to find an assortment of these, you're going to find an assortment of prices, and you're also going to find plans, and I think some of those plans are actually on the YouTube, uh, you're going to find plans where you, you can even build your own. But it's a, it's a real insight into how the two-dimensional space works in the way it gets divided and its appeal to the human nature. Be sure and view all of our quick tips. And while you're doing so, subscribe to the channel, click on the bell, so you'll always get a notice when we produce a new quick tip, which is every week. And if you have a question, leave it in the comments section and we'll make a quick tip for you. Also, take a trip over to dynamize.com where I have full length lessons, downloads, DVDs, lots of other stuff there, some free stuff for you. And while you're there, you can subscribe to the newsletter and that way you'll always be informed every time we do something new.